So what are the three ETF that will make us wealthy? Good question. And I'm glad you asked. Well, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the ETF where if we put our money in over time, based on their history, even though we know past performance doesn't guarantee you future results. But over time, we believe that we will accumulate wealth and there's risk in anything, right? If you do nothing with your money, it's going to lose power by inflation. So there's a risk of doing nothing as well. So first question, what is an ETF? An ETF basically is a basket of stocks collected in one fund under one ETF that you can buy a share of that. And you can buy it and sell it multiple times of the day, just like a stock. There's less risk in an ETF because you're diversified, right? You may buy one ETF that holds a hundred or several hundred or several thousand stocks. So if one was to go down, it doesn't pull the whole thing down. You may have one go down, but you may have um, hundreds of them that are going up. So your risk is mitigated. So that's one of the benefits of buying an ETF. You do have to pay a little because it is being run by fund managers, even though they're following usually uh, an index, which is almost like they're trying to mirror a known quantity. For example, the S&P 500 index, they may try to mirror that. But the expense ratio is usually not too bad, and but that's something you have to look at because it can eat into your return. So we talk about the pros. Um, one of the cons in, one of the cons about an ETF is that you can pick and choose what you invest in. Meaning, if there are stocks that the ETF holds that you don't like, you can't take them out because they're in it. It's like all or nothing. So that's one of the downside of buying an ETF. But the other thing you have to keep in mind too is that when you buy an ETF that tracks say an S&P 500 index, you, you can only get market returns because you're mirroring the market. You cannot beat the market. So with that being said, if you have a portion of your portfolio allocated to domestic stocks, like the S&P 500 index or the total market, you're going to match the market. No better, no worse. So if you want, if the market goes up 10%, you go up 10%. The market goes up 5%, you go up 5%. The market goes down 1%, you go down 1%. But if you want to beat the market, you can't mirror the market. You have to be different. So the options I'm going to give you are going to be options for a broad-based domestic diversified stock, option for growth sector, and option for international sector. The allocation can be up to you, but, that, but that's how we're going to do it. Without any further ado, Let's jump into my computer. Start with the, the first option for our foundational ETF. And this is Vanguard VU, which is the S&P 500 ETF. It's available also as an Admiral share, but it's a $3,000 minimum. The ticker, I think, is VXIAX. But if you buy the ETF, you can buy one share. You can even buy a fraction share and still get exposure to the S&P 500. On a scale from one to five, in terms of risk, it's a four, meaning there is risk, but there's always risk in investing. But people don't buy, people buy VU for the potential growth. The expense ratio is very low at 0.03%, meaning you're only paying $3 for every $10 you have invested, okay? Year to date has been doing great, almost 8% up from the beginning of the year. The one-year return has been about 30.4%, which is absolutely phenomenal since we've been in this bull market. The three-year return, 11.8%. The five-year return, 14.72%. The 10-year return, 12.66%. And since inception in September of 2010, over 14% return. Right now, you can buy one share for about $467. The reason why there's 505 shares in VU is because certain companies have multiple classes of shares, like Berkshire Hathaway, the class A and class B share, 
and Google has a class A and a class C share as well. In terms of the uh, sector allocation, very heavy in information technology, okay? Because the S&P 500 is a market-weighted index, meaning the bigger the company, the larger representation it has in the index. So your Apple, your Microsoft, your Google, because they're a huge company, they get a bigger representation. So almost 30% exposure to information technology. And then you have financial and healthcare with 13.1% and 12.8% respectively. You have consumer discretionary, 10.3%, communication, 8.9%. Uh, you have energy, 3.8%. You have consumer staples, 6%. Everything else is in the 2% range, materials, real estate, and utilities. The top 10 holdings, like you expect, very familiar names, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Facebook, Class A, Alphabet, Class A and Class C, Berkshire Hathaway, and Tesla, and then you have Broadcom, okay? It does play a dividend. Um, it's only about 1.4% dividend yield. But people buy, not for the dividend mainly, but for the growth. And, you know, if you reinvest your dividend, it let it grow much faster. So this is VU. So now let's look at our second option for foundational ETF. And this would come in the form of BTI, which is Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. It does come in an admiral share for $3,000 minimum, and that would be the VTSAX. That's the ticker. But you can buy the equivalent ETF version, and it trades like a stock. You can buy and sell whatever you want, and you can buy a fractional share. You can buy $1 worth of a VTI. It is also a four on the risk reward from one to five, meaning it there is meaning there is risk as always, but the potential for growth is why you're buying. The expense ratio is 0.03 percent, just like the VOO, meaning three dollars for every ten thousand dollars you have invested. Year to date return is again um, over seven percent um, since the year started. The one-year return has been about 28%, 28.6%. The three-year return has been about 9.74%. The five-year return, about 13.85%. The 10-year return, about 11.98%. And since inception, and it's been there since 2001, it's about 8.52%. So very similar, maybe a little lower than uh, VOO, but very similar. So you see it's trading for about 254 Dollars. The number of stocks is uh, over 3,700. So you see the broad diversification. So it includes the top 500, like VO, but then it, it also includes other companies that are out of, that are smaller than the top 500. And that's where the additional 3,200 stocks are coming from. Um, P.E. ratio is about the same, 23. The second allocation is going to be very similar, very heavy in technology, 31.9%. Um, and then again, you go to, it's very heavy in technology, about 31%. Um, the consumer discretionary is higher in VTI at 14%. I think it was about 10% in VOO. The financial was 13% in VEO. Now it's about 10, 10.9 in, in uh, VTI. Healthcare is about the same, about 12.2%. Um, then energy is about 4% and everything is pretty low in, in the low single digits. The top 10 is going to be very, very similar. Top 10 is going to be very similar. Um, yeah, it's going to be very, very similar. They also pay quarterly dividends. So that's your options for your broad foundational ETF. Now, let's look at our options for growth ETF. We already gave you the option for our foundational ETF. Now, 
we need to allocate a portion of our portfolio to growth, okay? So the growth ETF options, we have a couple. The first one, let's look at Vanguard's Information Technology ETF. This is Vanguard's option for those people who like those high-flying information technology companies like Apple and Google, okay? This would be Vanguard's VGT. Again, also available the admiral share, but it's going to be a $3,000 minimum, or you can buy the ETF version VGT. When you look at the risk reward scale from one to five, it's at five, meaning there is more risk. Why is there more risk? There's more risk because you're allocating a portion, a large portion of your money just to one sector. If something happens to the, if something happens specific to the information technology sector, it will be more, you'd be, your portfolio will be more adversely affected. Why? Because if something happens, say, to the cost of chip, making the computer chips, right? We just happened a couple of years ago. It's going to adversely affect that sector because you're fully concentrating it. So it's more risk. And with more risk comes the potential of more reward. If they do very well, then you will do very well. But again, it's more risky, but you have to remember that. The expense ratio is a little higher, right? We've, before, we've been dealing with 0.03%, so $3 for every 10000 Now we have expense ratio of 0.10%, which means you're going to pay $10 for every $10,000 invested, which is not, not terrible, but just something you have to be aware of. So we see the category of technology, right? It is sector-specific. Year to date, since 2004, right, since uh, March 1st, it's been up already 8.96%, which is great for pretty much two months of the year. Your portfolio is already up almost 9%, okay? So let's look at some returns. The return of VGT... Um, in the one year return for VGT, we see 48.29%. Can you believe that? 48.29% in the last year. So if you had $100,000 invested in VGT a year ago, that $100,000 would be worth almost $150,000 right now without you doing anything. So it's been doing really great. Over the last three years, the return has been about 14%. Over the last five years, it's been about 22%. Over the last 10 years, 10 year return, it's been 20%. That is phenomenal, right? And since inception, it's been around since 2004, so it's about 20 years old, 13% return, which is phenomenal, okay? Absolutely phenomenal. And you can buy one share of... Uh, a VGT for about five hundred and twenty-seven dollars. So there's three hundred and twelve stocks in this ETF. Okay, there's about four hundred and eighty-eight billion dollars of assets in this ETF. Mm -hmm. The PE ratio thirty-four, which means it's very expensive because the market is going up and doing very well. The sector specific, right? We know it's information technology, but the sector specific within information technology, there's different categories and they are application software, communication equipment, like the hardware, electronic components, electronic equipment and instruments, electronic manufacturing services, internet service and infrastructure, IT consulting and other services, semiconductor materials and equipment, semiconductor system software, technology distribution, technology distributors, technology hardware storage and peripheral, right? Like some of these things we may, not, we, we may not understand, but we know that these are all different components of the information technology, right? And basically they are diversified within the information technology. But obviously if you look at the numbers, the software is like 25% of it, almost a quarter. Then the technology, hardware, storage, and peripheral, another twenty, another twenty-one percent, and then the application software, fourteen point eight percent. Those are the, the huge part of it, right? And the companies, right? We said there's over three hundred companies. Top ten, 
Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Broadcom, Adobe, Salesforce, Inc., at, uh, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, Cisco, Oracle, Accenture. So, so these are the companies that are, we hear about when, when people talk about artificial intelligence, right? And that means there's probably going to be companies there that we've never heard of. Let's take a quick peek at uh, page two. I'm sure there's going to be companies there that we have never heard of. Uh, Intel, we've heard of. Intuit, IBM, Qualcomm, Service Now, never heard of that. Texas Instruments, I've heard of that. Applied Materials, I've heard of that. LAM Research, I've heard of that. But if we keep going, there's going to be companies that we've never heard of. You're, the bottom line, you're diversified, and it's part of your growth portfolio because you want to grow. Okay? So you have your stable foundational, but then you have a growth ETF. So this is one option, VGT. So this is one option, VGT, which is Vanguard's Information Technology ETF. So another growth option you may have to power your portfolio in your growth sector is Vanguard Growth ETF, ticker VUG. Again, available to add more shares, but again, it's going to be probably a $3,000 minimum, but it's available at an ETF. So you can buy a fractional share. You can buy $1 worth of it if you want. On the risk scale from one to five, it is a four. I mean, there's a little risk. The expense ratio is 0 0.04, again, very low. Vanguard is known for that. So this is going to be $4 for every $10,000 invested. The year-to-date return of VUG has been already 10.45%. In the first two months, it's up 10.45%, which is great. The one-year return for VUG, 47.66%, which is phenomenal. Though in the last year, it's been doing really well, right? Pretty similar to VGT. The three-year return is about 11%. The five-year return, 18%. The 10-year return, 14.73%. And since inception, which is, uh, January of which is January of 2004, it's been 11.16%. It's going to cost you about $343 per share. There's 208 stocks in VUG. The PE ratio is 35, so expensive. I mean, these stocks are doing very well. And, you know, because of the high growth rate, you're going to pay for it. The sector allocation in VUG, we'd see over half of VUG is in technology. 55.8%. So it's heavily weighted in technology, just like VGT was, right? But I think this is even heavier, 50, over half of it, 55% is in technology. The consumer discretionary is almost 20%. Those two are the real growth drivers. So if information is doing, if information, so if technology is doing really well, VUG is going to be going to the moon. If it's not, it's going to be heavily affected by it because it's very overweight in technology. Consumer discretionary, about 20%. And everything else is going to be very low. Healthcare is about 7%. Industrial is about 8%. Everything else is going to be low, single digits, sometimes even less than a percent. Okay? So just understand that. Heavily into technology. Top 10, very familiar again. No surprise. Right? Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, very similar. Visa, uh, it's the only one that's different. I wasn't in um, the previous top 10. Again, you do get a dividend. You do get a quarterly dividend. Now, another option for growth I figured I would include would be this Invesco QQQ. All the other options we've shown so far have been from Vanguard, but this one is from Invesco. You see the commercials all the time. Invesco QQQ, I know you have. And you're like, what is that? Invesco QQQ is an ETF, and it is, just like every other ETF you could buy and sell, it is an exchange-traded fund that features Apple, Google, Microsoft, and more. So Invesco QQQ is an ETF that tracks technology stocks that are traded on the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the fund details. 
The ticker is QQQ. Easy to remember. Invesco QQQ ETF tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, giving you access to the performance of the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ. So these companies are not financial companies. The fund and the index are rebalanced quarterly and reconstituted annually. So they're always looking to make adjustments. The ticker QQQ is, tra is traded on the NASDAQ. The inception date is March 10th, 1999. Number of holdings, 101. So the, the expense ratio is 0.2%, which is a little higher, right? Which means that you're going to pay $20 for every $10,000 you have invested. It's a little more expensive, right? Because we've before previously seen expense ratio 0.04%. You pay $4 for every $10,000. Now you're paying $20. So that's like five times as, as expensive. Um, assets under management is about $258 billion. Minimal initial investment. There's no minimal. Fractional shares. Yes, they do get fractional shares. The top 10 holdings. Microsoft, 8.8%. 8, 8 Apple, 8.06%. NVIDIA, 5.61%. Amazon, 5.24%. Uh, Meta Platform, Class A, 4.96%. Broadcom, 4.5%. Tesla, 2.8%. Again, very, very, very familiar. Costco, that, that's a little different. Costco, a little different. 2.4%. Alphabet, um, Google Class A, and AMD, the semiconductor company. So, very... Um, Familiar. Sector allocations. Very heavy in the technology. 57.64%. That's the blue. Very heavy in technology. So this is similar to the Vanguard. This is similar to the Vanguard VUG. Very heavy in technology. But at a lower expense ratio. Consumer discretionary, 19%. Everything is a little low. So the big thing that's going to stand out here is going to be the expense ratio for QQQ, which is 0.2%, right? That's a little higher than we've seen. And that's why a lot of people like Vanguard. Let's see if we can see the um, performance. Let's look at the performance and see. Strong results over time. So here they're comparing Invesco QQQ, which is the dark blue line, NASDAQ 100, which is the light blue line, and S&P 500, which is the blue line. Over uh, a 10-year period. So here we see the S&P 500, your 10,000 would turn into... 20, your 10,000 would turn into 33,000. We see your uh, NASDAQ would turn into 54,000. Your NASDAQ 100 index would turn into 54,000. And your Invesco QQQ would turn into 52,000. So it has outperformed. Just like the um, VGT and the VUG. But probably, probably would have done better because the expense ratio is much lower. So again, heavy in the technology, um, but I think with the option from Vanguard with the low expense ratio, the VGT and the VUG, I think you know you can get the performance of the Invesco without the price. Now let's look at some international exposure. So now we have our foundational ETFs. We have our options, VOO or VTI. Then we did our options for growth right and we had uh, vug we had uh offering from vanguard vug we had bgt and we also added investco qqq now let's now we need a sector for international we want to get an international exposure some people may say a lot of those companies are multinational which is true apple does business um in the u.s and around the world 
So it really is a multinational company, even though it's based in the U.S. But some people may want more direct exposure or greater exposure to international markets. Offerings, options from Vanguard is the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. So this is giving you exposure to more, this is giving you exposure to international companies, companies that are based overseas. So on the risk reward, it's a four from one to 10. The category is world stock. So I guess we can look at stocks from all over the world. The expense ratio is a little higher, 0.07%. So you're going to pay $7 for every $10,000 invested. Um, let's take a look at this. Year to date return, 5.4%. So a little lower than we have seen in um, the... Uh, domestic stocks and also in the growth stock. So the one year return has been about 22.29%, um, which is uh, which is great. Not as good as we've seen for the, for the indexes or the ETF tracks. The one year return has been 22.29%, which is great. It's lower than we've seen for the ETF that tracks the S&P 500 or the total market, where they've been like in the range of about 30%. The three-year return, 6.48%. Five-year return, 10.49%. 10-year return, 8.48%. Since inception, 2008, 7.3%. Um, so it's lagging um, those previous um, ETFs that we mentioned. They're going to cost you about $108. Per share, let's look at the, uh, there is, so in this Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, there is almost 10,000 shares of international companies. So you're getting broad exposure. Almost 10,000 shares of companies in there. The median market cap for each of these companies is about 78 billion. So they are large companies. Almost 10,000 companies. Now, let's look at the sector allocation. The sector allocation for this Vanguard Total World is going to be 64% from North America. So, even though international is still heavily weighted to North America, so 64% North America, so it's going to be um, companies based in the US, Canada, and Mexico. And then it is 15% uh, companies in Europe, 10% companies in the Pacific. 9%, 99% in emerging markets, only 0.2% companies in the Middle East. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's heavily weighted toward North America. The top 10 holdings. We see very familiar names. Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway, very familiar names, right? Because heavily um, North America is heavily invested in North America. And with 10,000 um, holdings, that's a lot of holdings. Okay, so this is Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. Now, another option for international exposure is the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF, ticker VXUS. This one excludes companies from the US. Okay. So VXUS, total in Vanguard, total international stock ETF, it excludes companies from the US as opposed to the total world, which included the North America, which included North America. So the Vanguard total international stock ETF gives you international exposure without companies from the US. That's why it's XUS as opposed to the Vanguard total world, which included um, the North American companies like US and Canada. So year-to-date return, 2.31%. Um, you do have a greater dividend yield, 3%, right? 3.01%. So you, you, you do have a better dividend yield. There are 8,577 holdings, okay? The inception date, January 26, 2011. 
three, almost $400 billion in assets under management. The one year return is 12.56%. The three year return, 1.50%. Five year return, 5.72%. 10 year return, 4.2%. And since inception, only 4.28%. So you see now they're different now when they removed companies from the United States. Those were probably the large drivers of growth, like your Amazon, your Google, your Microsoft were removed. And then you see the companies that are remaining are not giving you much growth. So again, you want to keep that in mind, okay, for um, international exposure. Now here's another option or final option for international exposure. It's the Vanguard FTSE All World X US ETF. So I guess these are companies traded on the FTSE. I guess these are companies traded on the FTSE stock exchange and they're companies all over the world except for us so there's no us companies um on risk from one to five it's a five so it's riskier so there's no us company the only company from the rest of the world so it's more, much more risky the expense ratio 0 0.07 so that's seven dollars for every ten thousand dollars invested the year-to-date return is 2.6 percent Remember, there's no U.S. companies here. It's ex-U.S. The return, remember, no U.S. companies. The uh, one-year return, 13%. Three-year return, 1.6%. Five-year return, 5.87%. Ten-year return, 4.32%. Since inception, 2007, 3.63%. So very anemic return when you remove the U.S. So you want to keep that in mind, okay? So there are 3,821 companies in this ETF. The, mark, the median market cap for each company is about 42 billion. So they're pretty moderate size. Earnings growth rate, 12.4%. Price to earnings ratio, 13.2. Uh, so a little um, more affordable, let's put it that way, as opposed to the S&P 500 P ratio of like 23, which is much more expensive. Now, let's look at the, reg the regions here. Remember, this is the uh, Vanguard All World FTSE except or X US. So there's no US here. So Europe, 41%. Pacific, 27%. Emerging markets, 24%. Heavily, almost a quarter percent. Almost a quarter of the uh, ETF is from emerging markets, okay? Or developing countries, um, which is how they to refer to it. North America, only 6.4%. So that's ex-US, so that'd be Canada and Mexico. Um, some of these, um, a lot of these you're not going to know. Top 10 holdings. Novo, Novo Nordisk, A slash S class B. ASM, ASML Holding, never heard of that. Taiwan Semiconductor. Again, this will be company ex-US, not US. Nestle, that's a food company. Samsung, we've heard of Samsung. Toyota, Tencent is a Chinese company. Novartis, I think that's a medical company. LVMH, uh, Moet, Hennessy, we've heard of Hennessy. <laughs> and Louis Vuitton, we've heard of that. Shell, right, that's the energy company. So now, these are companies, um, most of them you are not going to know because it's ex-US, but that's for the fun of it. Let's look at some of these um, um, names. And you would have this, if you were to buy this ETF, VEU, Roach Holding, AstraZeneca, the pharmaceutical, SAP, BHP Group, Taiwan Semiconductor, Alabama, we've heard of that, HSBC Holding, I think that's a bank, um, Royal Bank of Canada. So again, you're not going to know a lot about it. So God, So I know this video was a little long, but I wanted to give you as much value as possible for you to do your own due diligence and really see what will work for you. So we gave you two options 
for the broadly diversified domestic ETF, which is ticker VOO for your S&P 500 ETF and ticker VTI, which is your total stock market ETF. So for the growth sector, we gave you two offerings from Vanguard and one from Invesco. The Vanguard growth ETF, ticker VUG, and Vanguard information technology ETF, which is the ticker VGT. We also gave you ticker QQQ from Invesco. And for your international sector, we gave you three options all from Vanguard. We gave you the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, which is ticker VT. We also gave you Vanguard Total International Stock ETF, ticker VXUS. And then we gave you Vanguard FTSE All World XUS ETF, ticker VEU. I know that was a mouthful. Do your own due diligence and you will decide what percentage allocation you'd want to give to each. And I would appreciate a subscription, a like, a comment, and I will see you on the next one. And until next time, continue to command your money to grow. MD Investor, out.